So, good afternoon. My name is Nazia Mestawi. I'm an artist. Uh, I've been working as an artist for the last 17 years. Uh, we can run the video because, in fact, um, I'm going to show some of the earlier work, but I'm not going to explain it. It's just going to run behind me. Uh, it's just to show some references because it's really in my work. In fact, what I do is I mix physical space and digital space. I've been trained as an architect, and I always had this uh, will to question, in fact, the, the reality we are living in and to see where we're going to. And since I'm a kid, I had a passion for technologies and sciences. Uh, because, in fact, when we think about the future uh, our society is heading to, uh, it brings us, in fact, into sciences and technologies, because somehow they are the extension of our consciousness, and it shows where we're we heading to. And when I was studying uh, city planning, it was very interesting, because when you design today a city, you need to know what is going to be the future in, of our society within the next 30 years or the next 50 years, and it needs to fit with the evolution, the potential evolutions of the society. So it's also a, a possibility of projecting ourselves into what is going to be our society. And uh, I was so interested into that process that I decided to work as an artist instead as a, uh, of a city planner. And I started to create the different works that you see here. But also what I was really interested in is to question the reality we live in and to see in fact, how we can uh, open new propositions. Because, in fact, creating something that uh, evokes the future is also a way of creating an imaginary that will help other people to build it, like science fiction. And I think it has always been a very important exercise. And today we see that we are creating somehow a future that has been already shaped before. So, as an artist, I think it's also interesting to go into that path. But, of course, we have a different freedom that, than the scientific world, and it's also a, a space for utopia, for experimentation. Uh, one of the topics I was uh, mostly interested in is quantum physics, because, in fact, uh, about one century ago, we had a total um, thinking revolution in sciences, so the very pyramidal, materialist way of thinking uh, that our society uh, has come from is shifting into a more immaterial, a more networked vision of reality. With quantum physics, we know today that every uh, particle that composes our body is in fact, uh, let's say, made out of vibration and energy, and that everything is mostly immaterial. Everything is interconnected at the fundamental level. And I think it changes everything. And um, it is, might seem counterintuitive to us, because we come from that uh, cultural background that is very materialist and mechanist. But in fact, there exist many societies in the world that still live in a reality where visible worlds and invisible worlds mer merge. And in fact, it's the case of the most ancestral societies. And that's how my passion for quantum physics brought me to the Amazon rainforest. Because when I discovered that tribes were living in a reality uh, that is so different from ours, that, but that reality might be compatible with some of the concepts of quantum physics, I wanted to experiment it from the inside. Uh, most of the time when I was sharing concepts of quantum physics, like for example in those works, uh, through artwork, it was very cerebral, very intellectual, but it was, um, let's say, far from a physical experience where you could sense it with your experience, with your sensibility, with your feelings. So I had to live it myself to be able to share it with the audience. So for the first time six years ago, I left to the Amazon, and I went for, I mean, to investigate and to make a research on that topic to connect technology and uh, quantum physics with the most ancestral societies. And I called it somehow ancestral future, because my theory was to uh, find, in fact, how the, those societies that we connect with, um, let's say, ancestral societies and ancient history of what humanity could have been um, several millennia ago, and how that those cultures could influence our future. 
So really connecting those two extremes. So when I was there, uh, I could experience amazing uh, situations. So this is the Hunikwin tribe, and I've been staying with them about one month every year for the last six years. And uh, they've, they've told me so many things, I can't explain everything here. But uh, one of the most touching experiences I lived with them was um, to understand that, in fact, they understand themselves as being part of a network. There's no hierarchy between different species. Uh, they see them themselves as being totally part of the environment, and they have a very strong respect for every living organism, every tree, every animal. They have pattern and they have songs that describe the energy that is coming out of those animals. And for example, the song that you're hearing here is a song that is describing the energy of the Samauma, which is the tree of life. So it inspired me an artwork that is called Sounds of Light. And in that artwork, I use cymatic. Cymatic is the study that um, uh, analyzes the shapes, physical shapes generated by sound in matter. And in fact, I use a, a system that creates vibrations. Those vibrations come directly from the sound. And in fact, those songs that they are singing are cures. So actually, you can see the energy coming from the cure. And then I use a brain interface on the head of the shaman. And the idea there is to analyze the emotions of the shaman when he's singing. So of course, the idea behind that is to show the invisible layers that they live in and that they know they experience them every day because their physical world is only one facet of their reality, which is mostly immaterial. And the idea is to use technologies to reveal those invisible layers of reality. So here with the brain waves, I change the color that is reflected at the surface of the water. So what we see here, that kind of sun, is a um, kind of um, representation a visual, visual representation of those immaterial layers, energy, emotions, uh, vibration, healing, that we can feel when we hear the song. And this is also this idea of showing that we can use our technologies to reconnect us with the essential. And the essential might be uh, becoming immortal. It might also be being connected with ourselves, with our true self, with our feelings, with our consciousness. So that was also what I was trying to do through artwork, to see, in fact, how art can bring that connection between technology and the essential. And what we did with that work is, in fact, uh, I invited the Indians to paint their songs. So they did the same thing as I did with another technology, which is painting. And uh, they realized these amazing paintings of huge snakes and birds and, and all different species that they see when they hear those songs. And to me, it's really a way to mix two technologies, or modern technologies and more ancestral technologies, to show the invisible layers that are behind that song. And actually, we sold one of the, the very first painting they did. You maybe saw it in the video. And we exchanged it with land. So actually, they, today, in exchange for their land, uh, their, their artwork, they have an additional land where they are building new projects and they are reforesting that land. So it's, it's a beautiful story that started six years ago and that is now growing and growing ever bigger. And uh, that uh, work also connected me very much with, of course, with nature and with trees, the consciousness that trees, of course, they capture carbon, they, they are good for keeping the water in the ground, for generating biodiversity. But for them, trees are living organisms with whom they have the capacity to exchange thoughts and ideas. So it's a totally different vision of what nature is. It's not an object. Here you see a painting that shows that to them, a um, tree is a consciousness. And uh, that vision of what tree is and what nature is and what life is in general, a conscious life that you can connect with and with what you can exchange many concepts, many ideas, it inspired me several other works. So you're going to see here, it's called One Beat, One Tree. It's the very first artwork I created when I came out of the forest the first year. Uh, it's an inter uh, interactive artwork where, in fact, the presence of the visitor gives birth to a virtual tree. The tree is in 3D, and it grows according to your movement. Every virtual tree that grows creates a forest, a virtual forest. 
But the most important thing is that every virtual tree growing, growing in that forest is really planted in a reforestation program. So the first program I started was with the Indian in, in the Amazon, and that project was presented uh, in uh, Rio Mais Vinci in Rio in 2012. And uh, that project was a very important experience for me because as I've always been trying to connect physical world and digital world, here there was one step further because it was connecting digital world and physical world with the real physical world that is totally alive. So thanks to the participation of the visitors, they would give birth to a real tree that might live longer than, than they do. So I think it's also good to understand that, in fact, art can be something that, um, let's say, brings us somewhere else, but it's also a way to help us really take action and be actors. So here you see, in fact, the next step of the same concept, which is called One Heart, One Tree. It's a project that I created in 2015, and it was presented for the opening of COP21 in Paris during one week on the Eiffel Tower. So the whole Eiffel Tower was transformed into a virtual forest, thanks to projection mapping technologies. And in fact, it's a totally collective project, so all people from all over the world could participate to the project. It really started as a crowdfunding project, so it really exists thanks to the participants. It's, it really comes from, I mean, this idea of the bottom-up, that project is really a representation of the bottom-up project. It really comes from people, and it was presented on the Eiffel Tower. More than 1.3 million people took part to the project, and uh, more than 100,000 uh, trees, actual trees, have been planted. So people could participate uh, by downloading a smartphone application. They would put their finger on the sensor. I recorded their heartbeat, and it was their heartbeat that was giving birth to their vit virtual tree. And then they received a rendezvous on the Eiffel Tower. They had a message that they put next to their tree so they could recognize it. And they received a small video of their tree growing on the Eiffel Tower. And then, again, every virtual tree has been planted in a real reforestation program. I have five different reforestation programs on all five continents, always with amazing partners, different associations. So I always work with local people planting local trees. So now we have planted more than 100,000 trees. And for example, you see here is Jadav Payang, he's an Indian from Assam, he's a, a shepherd, and he alone, during 37 years, planted a zone that is twice bigger than Central Park. So we are planting additional zone with him, but we are also training young people of the community to do the same thing as he did. And I think it's also a way to show that each one of us has the possibility to take action and to be part of the solution. And that was really the message I wanted to share through the artwork, because Specifically during those meetings, COP21, that we, you have all nations and most people think that it's in their hands, they're going to find solution. But of course, it never happens this way. It's up to us. We are the problem and we are also the solution. And the idea, again, is to see how we can be part of the solution. And art is a good way just to create an invitation to give the, 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 the will for every person to be part of the solution, to take action and actually in the project, uh, we connect uh, life with another living being, and that's the reason why you plant the tree with a heartbeat, and it becomes a real tree. So I think the project, I mean, the idea with the project was also really to see how our technology can help us reconnect with nature, reconnect with the essential, and understand that, of course, we're not trying to save the world, because the world doesn't need, need to be saved. I mean, the nature, works by itself. What we try to save is our place on this planet. And to, to, I mean, to find our place on this planet, we need reliance. We need to find a reconnection with the world, the reconnection with others, and the reconnection with ourselves. And I think that's the very first step. So I think we need to inspire our future and to put meaning, heart, and consciousness into our reality. So I think that can be one of the role of art. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.